Well, good morning. Welcome to Forest View. We're glad you're here on uh, this the Lord's Day. We're going to go ahead and get started. We hope things are going well uh, for you. And uh, anything you need to share prayer-wise, please let us know. If you like uh, additional folks praying for you in the family of God, we uh, like to bear one another's burdens and uh, lift, lift you up to the Lord. And we face those things from time to time. We all, we all take our turns, don't we? So, hey, continue to pray for uh, Guy Bodemer. Uh, a lot of a lot of doctors and hospital visits this week, and uh, some tests coming up. Uh, I know he doesn't want me to really detail this out for you, but uh, been through a lot, you know, since Sue's been called home, and and uh, this on top of it. So just pray for him. These upcoming tests, heart related, and uh, we uh, thank the Lord for for Guy and the blessing he is to our to our church family. But welcome, and we hope that God will bless you as we worship the One who's worthy of our praise. Uh, shout out to a young man this morning, uh, Patty and, and Dan, Dan Wise, uh, their, their dad Mel Wise, who has been part of my life for a lot of years. Happy 89th birthday, Mel. We love you. God bless you. And I'll tell you, Mel, your generation, you're, 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 you're a strong breed of people. Uh, you know, the the guys that have come up behind you, you know, we don't, we don't know if it'll go that well for us. So <laughs> anyway, but thanks for being a blessing. Thank you for being a, a wonderful servant of the Lord. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer, ask his blessing on our, our time together. Father God, we thank you for your goodness and grace, your mercies that are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, for uh, the body of Christ here at Forest View. We thank you. Uh, Father, for using us, uh, Father, to further the gospel message, bless the ministries here, Lord. May we always seek your face and your guidance. Uh, Father, we need you every hour. Uh, bless the congregation here, no matter what we're facing and going through. We know that you're, you're a faithful God, and we, we can turn to you uh, in our times of need. And so, Lord, bless in this, this uh, worship hour. Allow it to uh, encourage our hearts. Uh, again, Lord, we, we praise you for uh, your, your great love for us, and Father, help us never to doubt that as we go forward in uh, the uncertainties in, in this world, in this life, and so we dedicate this uh, time to you. May it be acceptable uh, in your sight, and it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, uh, I promised you last week, and I hope it didn't come out as a promise because I kind of have a deluge of... Uh, announcements for you today and I I will minim I will minimize my announcements uh, to you as much as possible but I can't control what comes my way either so anyway um, just want to uh, give you some of those this morning following the morning worship service today we have a ministry leaders meeting any ministries in the church uh, we hope that you can be represented represented in those uh, meetings those monthly meetings so keep that in mind and we'll be meeting in the back uh, hall following uh, the service today. Uh, 7 p.m. Tuesday evening, Board of Trustees meeting. And uh, for those who are involved in that, uh, we'll meet as we regularly do the uh, last Tuesday of each month. Next, uh, next Sunday, 514 will be with us as our music part of the, the uh, church service. And also, May the, May the 14th, um, if you have not followed the Lord in believer's baptism, if you have been in the faith for a long time and have not taken that step of, uh, of uh, outward, I should say obedience, I don't like using that word a lot, but outward uh, expression of your, of your faith and uh, kind of going on the record, it's an encouragement to the, to the church as well. Please see me. I have some material to ha hand out to you about uh, baptism, and so uh, keep that in mind. That's the 14th. Uh, not in your bulletin this morning. On May the 21st, we are having a gentleman here from Kenya, and his name is Titus. Some of you may know who I'm talking about. I know you do, Addy, and uh, I know you do, Chip and, and Lynn. Uh, but anyway, Chip in the next several Sundays leading up to that, he is going to give you some information about who Titus is and the ministries that he has in Kenya and as far as a missions emphasis that uh, we want to 
kind of uh, get into more uh, deliberately as a church. And so Titus has uh, spoken at our men's uh, breakfast before. He's had a connection with Niagara Community Bible Church over the years, and uh, he, will be, he will be speaking to us uh, on the morning of the uh, 21st, so keep that in mind, and you will not be disappointed. Looking forward to having him with us. We're going to have a, a potluck uh, dinner after the morning service on that day, a Q&A time with him, and an opportunity to see what God lays on our hearts as a church, and uh, Chip will be expanding on that for the next uh, a few Sundays out. So keep, keep that in prayer, if you would. Uh, young at Heart uh, Luncheon and Fellowship this Friday at 11 o'clock over at Niagara Frontier Bible Church. Mary Jane and, and Greg Bellingham uh, have a wonderful ministry that they do uh, with that. And uh, the last time, I think we had over 50 people, Greg. And uh, so that was a real, real blessing and a lot of people from Forest View participate in that. Uh, by the way, we're going to be doing a Vacation Bible School this year with Frontier Bible Church. And uh, some of the folks from our congregation have gone to a few meetings. If you need any information about that, if you'd like to serve during VBS week in any capacity, uh, you can talk uh, to me, to Jan Perinelli, uh, whoever, uh, Mary Jane's here today um, from Frontier. And uh, so it's, it's nice to have this relationship with, with Frontier Bible Church. We had the three churches here for Good Friday service, and, and what, a, what a wonderful blessing that was uh, to the community of believers. So we, we praise the Lord for uh, having that opportunity. We're also going to be holding a um, combined church prayer meeting the first Sunday in June, and I'll give you more information about that. So uh, we're going to be gathering for prayer for our community, for our ministries, for our churches as well. So we greatly appreciate that. And another very important area of ministry is the nursery of our church. And we truly need help in there. If you have a child in the nursery, if um, you know you, you have that ministry serving you, maybe you'd like to serve in that as well, but we could use um, we could use more people serving in that capacity uh, during our, our Sunday morning worship services. The more people we have involved, the rotation expands, you know, and you're not in there a whole lot of Sundays close together. So we do need help in there because people do flow in and out of that as far as serving at times and then, then not able to serve there any longer. But it's always uh, something we'd like to um, have uh, expanded as much as possible. So any, anything you can do toward that, please see Krista uh, Nielsen. Krista, wave your hand there, and uh, we would greatly appreciate it. One other, one other thought this morning, too. Um, of course, spring is trying to get here, right? And uh, we, had, we had a week of it, so maybe that's all we're going to get. But um, we usually go from winter to summer, you know, kind of thing. But anyway, we have, we have a lot of outdoor work here and uh, guys, ladies as well, if uh, you can help out, we got flower beds to work on. Uh, they can be maintained after they're initially dealt with in the, in the season, but if you can help out, you can, you can see Brian Ziemendorf, he's at, he's at the back door, he's, he's ushering today, and uh, Brian works with that outdoor stuff, Craig Dumbleton, lawn cutting and all of that, but many hands, you know, it just makes it a whole lot uh, easier uh, for, for all of us, but to maintain the church and the grounds, it takes a lot of effort, and if you'd like to serve in some capacity, those, those tangible things are truly a great help. So if you would uh, see me, see Brian, see Craig Dumbleton, uh, we would be delighted to uh, put you to work. Oh, okay. Well, with that said... So those are the announcements this morning. And Mr. Greg Bellingham, come and lead us in a few hymns of the faith today. Let's stand as we worship the one who's worthy of our praise. Here's one for you. He is risen. All right, great. You know what? He saves, too. Jesus saves, and it's real. So let's sing about it. Saves, bear the news to every land. Climb. 
across the waves. Onward tis our Lord's command. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Waved it on the rolling tide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Tell to sinners far and wide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing ye islands of the sea, and go back ye ocean caves. Earth shall keep her jubilee. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing above the battle strife. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. By his death and endless life, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing it softly through the gloom when the heart for mercy craves. Sing in triumph for the tomb, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing it out. Give the winds a mighty voice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Let the nations now rejoice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Shout salvation full and free. Highest hills and deepest caves. This our song of victory. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Amen. He saves. All you got to do is believe and receive what he did for you on the cross. He died for the forgiveness of all of our sins. Amen. Let's sing about the next song, Trust and Obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sigh nor a tear can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay for the favor he shows and the
the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Last verse. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Amen. Please be seated. Well, Angel Flores is coming to uh, share with you a few things this morning. And uh, one other, one other um, word concerning ministries I wanted to mention, uh, the first Wednesday evening in May is our closing ceremony and program for the Iwana ministry. Right, Sandy? And um, I would like to just tell you, and you might forget this as soon as I talk about it because it's not written down yet, but I would encourage you to come out for that closing ceremony. Say, so, well, I don't have a grandchild or a child in the program. But you know, you need to know what's going on in your church. And you would be very encouraged to see what God is doing in the lives, not only of the kids, but those who serve in the Iwana ministry. And come on, come on out for it and just enjoy the evening. Uh, the kids are going to sing some songs and recite some verses and, and just show you how they're, they're growing in their desire uh, for God's Word. So I encourage you to come out to be a part of that. And uh, we thank the Lord for all those who have served uh, in the Iwana ministry um, this year. I got to sit in on a class this past week unexpectedly. It was unexpected to the teacher, too. But I got, to, I got to sit on that. And I'm telling you, there was about five, maybe six boys in that class and uh, a couple girls in the class, too. And, you know, I was just completely blown away. These young boys, you know, you, you kind of have a, a stereotype. You know, these, these kids would be interested in, like, sports or everything else, but that kind of thing. These kids not only had a excitement about being in the Word of God, but they also knew how to use the Bible. And I was just taken back, and it was just wonderful. Amen. Amen. That's precious. Amen. I I just want to. Um, Piggybacking on what Pastor was saying, I think about that song, you know, Trust and Obey. It's one of my favorite songs, and it's a challenge. You know, it's a challenge. Something that we have got to take up. Something that brings great joy when we see those of the next generation take up the torch and, 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 and you know, set out to trust the Lord. And obey him, you know, and that's the, that's the goal of the church, is it not? Is that is that the goal of the church? And uh, you know, this past week, uh, the board—I don't even like to call it board because it sounds like prestigious or some some hierarchy. You know, the elders of the church got together, and and just to just to inform you. Um, you know, there's a, there's a great responsibility upon our pastor, uh, upon the elders of the church. It's, this is not something that, you know, we get elected to because it's a prestigious office. It's not. It's an office or a calling that has great responsibility. And I would say grave, it's an old English term for serious responsibility 
And we take, we take, I take very serious this call. It's not a call to this church necessarily, but it's a call of God. It's a call of God. And it's an answer to God. And, uh, and I just want, on, on the behalf of those that serve among you, teachers, you know, leaders in the church, you know, um, they do it because they sense a responsibility to the Lord. It's some, there's so much work that's done behind the scenes that we don't necessarily see. You see pastor here every Sunday, this is unrehearsed, and he preaches a message, you know, and forever how long that message goes. Uh, but you know what? If, if you were a fly in the wall in his life all week long, you would see how much time he gives to the study of the God's word and to prayer. And that's the call. That's, that's the serious call that we are called to serve the Lord. You know, and, and, and I know that that's the heart of those that love the Lord, those that love God's people. Because our desire is to not only serve God, but to serve you. Amen. And to, you know, to be available as the Lord leads us to, and to give instruction, uh, to give teaching in the word of God so that we can grow in the grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. So that we can all trust the Lord more. Amen. And we can obey his word. So I want to just read something to you real quick. Um, and this is, this is all something that we have actually talked about uh, during the week. Something that goes in the planning of everything that we do in the church. Everything that we do in the church. Um, it says, without God, life has no purpose. Do you believe that? Without God, life has no purpose. And without purpose, life has no meaning. Without meaning, life has no significance or hope. You were made, I was made for purpose, to fulfill the plan of God. All the conditions of our lives may not have been ideal. Our parents, our family of origin, where or how we were brought up. But none of those things can thwart the purposes of God for your life. Amen? In fact, Scripture reveals that you were planned by God, created for purpose to be the objects of his love. You and I were created by God for a purpose. You know, and that purpose was solely that God can lavish on you and me his love, that we could share his love. Think about that. That's great. You know, God didn't call us just so we can be servants, but we can be the, his offspring, adopted into his family, that he can love us. Amen? I love that. But it all starts with God, and knowing God is the key to life. Hosea 4, 6 says this, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you from being priest for me. That's a, that's a, a thought for leadership. But the NLT says it this way, My people are being destroyed because they don't know me. They don't know me. Amen? They don't have a knowledge. When you don't have a knowledge of the Holy One, you don't know the Lord. Amen? And, and to come into this world and to partake of a world and not have purpose in your life. Not know why you, you, God created you with significance. Is to, is to be spinning your wheels and going nowhere. And God doesn't want that. Amen? And I'm sure you don't either. This is the goal of the church. This is the goal of this church. That God, with his enabling grace, would provide 
uh, his people multiple opportunities to know and to grow up in, in Christ. For this purpose, we're working on a foundation class to explore. And this, I don't want to, I don't want to, people, I don't want people get, to get lost in the weeds or get lost in semantics here. You know, the ideal for the Christian is to come into a relationship. That's our calling. That's all of our calling, to come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. But that's just the beginning. That's just the beginning. The Lord wants us to know him and to discover his purposes and plans for our life. Think about that. Every one of us here, there's probably 150 people here this morning. We were born for purpose. And can you actually honestly say you're walking in your purpose today? And that's the heart's desire of not only myself, but it's the heart's desire of this, the leadership here of this church. And it, that's all the leadership. Amen? Amen, Betty? <laughs> that's the desire of all the church. What, uh, what, is, it to know, what is it to know Christ? Who am I as a Christian? What is my new identity that identifies me as a Christian or a saint? What does it mean to grow up in Christ? What's next? What does it mean to be a disciple or a follower of Christ? This, has, this and many more are the topics that we want to explore, you know, in this class. It's a, it's a class that uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer that, uh, you know, it's there to sign up, you know, and, and we have, you know, several options in which to uh, help um, nurture this, uh, this thought of growth or uh, this, this thought of discipleship. You know, we have the opportunity to do it by proxy and mentor, uh, by one-on-one, -on -one, or we have an opportunity to do it by elective uh, during the family Bible hour or uh, Sunday school, however you prefer to, to term it. But, um, uh, you know, I'd like you to, you know, take that opportunity to take it seriously. Think about what I am saying today. Think about what we're saying as a church. This is the call of every Christian. It's the call of mine. It's still my call. It's still my call today to trust the Lord and obey him. And obeying him is following him as a follower of Christ. Amen? And so take it seriously. Think about, you know, what it means to you. You know, I was sharing with pastors some months ago about, uh, you know, many people come, to, come into the church and they, and they give their heart to the Lord. And that's it. They've given their hearts to the Lord, but they're not growing in their faith. You know, and when trial and adversity comes, you know, people get stuck, right? And, and the battle is real. Amen? The battle is real. And so we need to grow. We need to understand who we are, what God has resided in us, what he has given to the church. We're to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Think about that. And so... Uh, that comes with knowing Christ. And that's the desire of the church, that you would grow in your faith. So um, sign up, and uh, more information will be coming. Uh, but that's, that's where we're headed. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, let me pray. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Father, we thank you, Lord, today for your goodness. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for your Holy Spirit, Father, this morning. Father, we give, uh, we give our attention to you. God, today, as your people, Lord, we want to, as the Himmel said, Lord, to trust and obey you, God, in all that we say and do. You've called us into relationship with you, Lord. Help us to grow in that relationship. Help us, Lord, to know you in a deeper way. Father, I pray that for your people today. I pray for those that are assembled here this morning. I pray, oh God, for those that have just recently come to Christ and for those that have been, Lord, believers 
for a long time. Father, each and every one of us, Lord, have a need for a deeper, closer walk with you. And I pray, O oh God, that by your spirit, that you would just, Lord, uh, prompt us. Prompt us, Lord, to, to move forward in our faith journey. Father, like Paul said of old, forgetting those things which are behind, I press forward towards the goal, towards the high calling in Christ Jesus. Let that be our prayer. Father, help us to be intentional in our growth. Intentional, Lord, in the ministry that you have called each and every one of us to, Lord. Father, we love you, Lord, this morning. We pray your presence among us. We pray that you would empower us, O oh God, to do the will of God from the heart. We thank you for it, and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Angel. And that sign-up sheet out in the front foyer, if you'd like to uh, enter into that course of growing in, growing in your faith and uh, learning how to use God's Word. It's a, a wonderful opportunity and irreplaceable in your, your walk with, with the Lord to uh, become more like Him. At this time, we're going to call upon our ushers to come to receive the morning offering and ask you to give back to the Lord a portion of that which God has blessed you with this past week as we worship Him this morning together with our giving. You might have noticed that was not Linda Williams behind the piano there today. That's uh, not her brother either, but they share the same last name. But uh, David Williams, he, we, we know he's been getting a little rusty with uh, the keys of late, so we, we asked if he would uh, bless us with his uh, musical ministry today as Linda is out to her brothers in Arizona. Uh, Pray for Linda and uh, her brother there, who you have prayed for in the past, um, battling with uh, brain cancer off and on, and uh, so she likes to get out to see him from, from time to time. Just before the message this morning, uh, Jim Salhaney comes to minister to you in song. What you have finished cannot be 
undone The work of the cross Was more than enough I've been set free I've been set free Sin has no hold Shame has no power over me Found in your mercy I've been washed clean You call me whole Saved and redeemed I've been set free There is a promise Written in your scars I am forgiven Changed by who you are What you have finished I will not forget I'm buried with Christ Raised from the dead I've been set free I've been set free Sin has no hold Shame has no power over me Found in your mercy I've been washed clean You call me whole Saved and redeemed I've been set free at the center of it all from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you Jesus Jesus nothing else matters nothing in this world will do cause Jesus you're the center Everything revolves around you, Jesus, you at the center of it all. Jesus, 
to you from my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center it's all about you it's all about you from my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about Jesus be the center of this church. Jesus be the center of this church. Every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess you. Bow with me, if you would, for a word of prayer. Father, indeed, as Jim shared in song this morning, Lord, would you be the center of this church? God, we know that is accomplished and is the result of you being the center of our hearts individually, that collectively we might be in unity and oneness of the Spirit uh, to be uh, about your business, Lord. We thank you that's eternal. Father, what a privilege it is to be called to the work of that eternal work and plan uh, that you, you have for us, Lord, to further the message of, of truth. And Lord, we pray that you indeed would be preeminent uh, in our lives. And Lord, as we study your word this morning together, encourage our hearts, stretch our faith, uh, challenge us, Lord, to be more like you by applying your truth, uh, Father, to uh, our hearts. And it's in Christ's precious name that we pray and ask. Amen. Well, we are in the book of Colossians, if you did not recall, but I'm sure most of you have. We took a uh, little break in there in regard to um, the season of the year with uh, the celebration of the resurrection. Uh, but getting back to the book of Colossians the last couple of weeks, we're in the fourth chapter today. We'll be looking at verses 2 through 6 of chapter number 4. Uh, but I guess if you were to give, give title to uh, this portion of Scripture, this message this morning, um, I would call it the, the Christian Code of Conduct. There is something that is expected of us after we have come to know Christ, how we go about uh, living our lives through the empowerment of the ministry of the Spirit of God and the ministry of prayer. Um, the apostles, I should say the disciples of the Lord, they did not go out but by prayer and fasting. And we should never attempt to do that which is the work of eternity in the arm or the power of the flesh. And so this portion of scripture pertaining to how we conduct ourselves going forward as believers, it pertains to the prayer life of his children, how we walk and how we conduct ourselves in regard to those who are outside of the faith, that we might indeed be a witness uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ, and how we, how we uh, speak, how we talk, uh, what we verbalize, and how we go about that. The Bible talks about that, our, our hearts and our message being always uh, with grace and seasoned with salt. So we'll, we'll explore that a little bit this morning as well. Now, in the book of Colossians, if you're studying through this, this book of the Bible as well as some of the other letters of the Apostle Paul to these New Testament churches, uh, Paul basically has a, a format and you can identify his writing because it, it's very much uh, consistent uh, throughout Scripture. So sometimes we ask those questions, don't we? How can we be sure who wrote 
uh, these various texts or who wrote these various passages. Um, well, Paul, Paul, the Pauline letters, if you would, are, are uh, very much in that presentation or format of the Apostle Paul. He uses a lot of repetition. But one thing he does do in his writings, if you would, or in his teaching, he begins with correct doctrine or he begins with correct teaching. And there's a reason for that. He's kind of setting the, setting the stage foundationally. You know, a church can never grow in Christ Jesus unless it, unless it has its footing. What you believe and why you believe it. That's why Angel um, was, was talking to you about uh, this upcoming course. I don't know. Since you've been in the faith, have you ever systematically gone through a discipleship course? You know, sometimes we have our Christianese language, you know, well, what is exactly a discipleship course? Uh, course. Uh, it's one thing to be a believer in Jesus Christ. It's altogether something more to be a follower of Jesus. Uh, you know, b- uh, bearing that uh, responsibility, if you would, after salvation to grow in the grace and knowledge and truth of the Lord. And so that's a responsibility and an onus on us. And I encourage you to be a part of that. I encourage you because there's, there's no real substitute to that. What I believe, why I believe it, being grounded in the Word, and, and, and knowing that when the storms of life come, that uh, you, you have your, your feet down uh, secure in the Word of Almighty God that never changes. And so I encourage you to be a part of that. And this is kind of how Paul leads into several of his letters to the churches of these New Testament uh, churches, if you would, the church at Colossae, he, he is basically uh, presenting correct doctrine and, and correct teaching, helping people to get established in the faith, to get grounded in the truth, and it is for the express reason, not for I have this knowledge about the Word, but that it would result in correct living. There's one thing to be a student of the Word of God academically, but the most important thing of studying God's Word or inductive, inductive Bible study to God's Word is application. You've heard that before, right? Um, application, application, application. If the Word of God is going to make a difference in your life, it's going to transform you, it's going to cause you to be able to live consistently uh, in, in the truths of God's Word and, and to live them out and to be a testimony and a witness for, for Him. You need to take what you have heard, as Paul said, what you have heard of me and have seen in me, these things do, if you would. Follow me as I follow Christ. And so his whole presentation is moving from correct doctrine, correct teaching, and hopefully resulting uh, in correct living. So Paul the Apostle moves from belief to behavior. And that is really the pursuit that we need to be on, uh, preferring the things of God, actually. Um, Knowing that uh, as we grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, we're going to fall more in love with the Christ. We're going to appreciate him that much more uh, in his sacrifice and in his teachings and uh, in his equipping of the saints to do the work of the ministry. So we want to unfold this text a little bit this morning moving from belief to behavior, and this is the activity, if you would, the the Christian code of conduct. Call it the three C's if you want to. Whatever uh, causes you to have a trigger there to uh, be able to recall these things. You know, people ask me after church sometimes or during the week, you know, hey, you made you made this point during the during the sermon. Just wanted to follow you up on that. Um, It's good if I can even remember what I preached on. You know, kind of thing, but uh, I wanted to uh, I wanted to take hold in my spirit. I just don't want it to be for the sake of of teaching or the sake of preaching or even when we study God's word. We want it to be a continuum that uh, we're growing and we see it realized in our in our conduct. The word of God transforming our lives. Uh, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, renewing your mind. By, by the holy word of Almighty God, getting that biblical worldview in place and having that world, uh, that, that biblical filter in a world that throws the kitchen sink at us with temptations and, and various things that would cause us to question, you know, what we believe and why we believe it. And, and that is a good question for us this morning. Why do you believe the things you believe? Well, because 
My mom or dad believed it, and it just kind of generationally got passed down to me. That is not enough, folks, to sustain you in your walk. That was their walk. No one's going to heaven on the, on the, on the skirt of, of, of their grandmother. No one is going to heaven. We must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And we must know him, not only as Savior, but we need to know him as Lord. And we need to know him in a, in a way that is tangible. And that uh, his promises are real and his promises are true. So verse number 2 of chapter number 4, it says, Devote yourselves to prayer. And, and that word devote is a, is a great emphasis, if you would, to this activity of those who are of the Christian faith keeping alert or watching, if you would, in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. So there's three things here, basically, in this first part of the, the Christian code of conduct. And it might read just a little bit different um, in, in, in your uh, passage there this morning. But that word devote, another word for it, might uh, be realized in, in what you're seeing there this morning. It is saying to continue in prayer. Continue in prayer. It's not just an event when we get together to pray on a, on a Sunday morning or when you uh, say your, your prayers at night before you go to sleep or when you wake up in the morning, there is this ongoing practicing of the presence of God in your life and communicating with the Lord all day long. It's, it's devoted to it. Angel identified it a little bit this morning with those who are in Christian leadership. We are to be given to the study of God's Word and to be devoted to God in prayer. And that is what you want your pastor and your elders, your trustees and your leaders, Sunday school teachers and the like, to be doing when you don't see them. And that should be occupying most of their time. Now, I say this to you this morning, not to, to make it sound, you know, something big and audacious, if you would, uh, but you know, a uh, 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 you know, 30, 40 minutes of preaching God's Word. Well, what, what goes into that? What's, what's going on during that? Well, number one, it's, it's, my, own, it's my own walk with Christ. It's my, my own study of God's Word. It's keeping my finger on the pulse of, of God's church and where we're at as a people, corporately, and what we, what we need to, to do, what the mood and the attitude and where we are as, as, as a fellowship in, in the family of God. Uh, you know, 20, 25 hours a week, you know, studying a, a, a certain text and, and drawing from it uh, what, what is there so that, that it, can be, it can be presented. And I share with you and, and other people who, have, who are teachers, you know, you, know, you know, Sundays roll around pretty quick, right? So, so before you know it, you know, we're, we're already two weeks out of, out of Easter Sunday. How quick, how quick that time just goes. And if we're just here putting in time and not applying the truths, you know, we're not going to realize the benefit of what Paul was saying here, planting the, the word doctrinally and, and the teaching of God's word in the heart of these believers so for the express reason that it would be realized in their carrying out of the faith or living of the faith. And so when he heard of them, whether he was with them or away from them, he would always give thanks for their, their faithful, faithfulness and staying with uh, the stuff, if you would. And so continuing in prayer, devoted to prayer, persevering in this form of worship and fellowship and communication with God and enduring, it means, like we just said, spending time there because it is a priority that is foundational to the Christian way of life. If you are a believer in Christ Jesus, you need to be someone who knows the importance of prayer. Now, we, we just said goodbye to another one who was a, a mantle of the Christian faith, a, a warrior of the faith, a, a, a steadfast servant of the cross for over five, genera five you know, generations, if you would, you know, in, 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 his, in his leading into ministry. So Charles Stanley, you know, just a, a, a wonderful teacher of God's word. A wonderful teacher of God's word. And, and a lot of you have, have grown because of his ministry. A lot of you have grown because of God using him. And we need to continue to pray for those who serve in, the, in those capacities because the enemy is out there over time, you know, beating at, at the doors against the teaching and the preaching of, of God's word. The enemy opposes the church. The enemy opposes God's word. And he doesn't want it to take root. He wants you to hear it academically. He wants you to put in your time in church as a duty 
but he does not want you to reveal application for correct living. He wants to be able to pick you off as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so that's why Sandy thrilled my heart Wednesday night. To see those boys, you know, to me it was a very unique thing. You know, it was like, a, what young boy wants to, you know, has this desire for the Word of God? Not just one of them, but one of, one of them, you know, encouraging the other to be in the Word of God. And you, you plan it early, and you plan it when they're young, and you, and you show the importance of God's Word, um, not only by just going through a Wednesday night in a WANA program, but, but uh, investing in them and knowing that the Word of God is, is, is of great import. You know, it, it's, there's nothing like it, and it will not return void. Those boys are going to be used of God. And that is the bottom line. And that's the bottom line with the Apostle Paul. I want to teach you correctly, so the express reason is that you will bear witness in correct living, living out your faith. And it is evidenced in this one code, this first code of conduct, if you would, this this prayer um, portion of of our walk, kind of like a a tripod, uh, if you would. And so it's the Christian way of life. Question for you this morning. What are the things you feel are necessary in order for you to be ready to face the day? And I think it's a good question because it's a barometer. Well, um, I like to brush my teeth in the morning because I'd knock my wife over, you know, kind of thing. And um, I don't like to miss too many meals, so breakfast, you know, we're kind of doing this intermittent, intermittent fasting, you know, when, when possible, not religiously. And uh, so I want to make sure my clothes are ready. I do my clothes on Saturday night for Sunday morning, you know. Like you need to know that, right? Kind of thing. <clears throat> and I am, the, I am the steaming king. I steam my clothes, you know, and I have a, I have a routine kind of thing. Well, the question is this morning, I can name all these physical things that I know I need to do to be, to be ready for the day. But in, in light of this Christian code of conduct, do I see it or do I understand it or is it a necessity for me to even be able to face the day that this is prayer a part of that answer to the question that I must pray and consecrate myself to the Lord for the events of the day that can be uncertain, do I see it as important as brushing my teeth? Do I see it as important as taking my shower or having my clothes ready? You need to answer that question because it's very revealing. It's a barometer to your own heart, right? So what are the things you feel are necessary that are must for a given day to feel ready for the day. And if prayer isn't there, here's the opportunity to put it in its right place. Because Paul taught the right things, he taught the truth, he he taught correct doctrine, but he wanted to see it resulting in, in that correct living, moving from belief to behavior. And so you can answer that question, and no hands please, on that one. You can answer that before the Lord. But there's something that needs to be going on. There's an activity that needs to be going on as you're praying. And what does that verse say in verse number 2? It says, with a comma there, after praying, keeping alert. Keeping alert. In your your, uh, scripture there, it might say the word watch. Being watchful, being alert while you pray kind of thing, if you would. Being willing to be used of God in a circumstance that you're praying about. Being aware of of the things to pray about, acutely attuned with the Spirit of the living God. Being being acutely aware of how to pray and how you're going about prayer, what you should be praying about. And that you're willing to be a part of of the answer to that prayer after you have said your amen. Now, I say that to say this and to give clarity to that is simply this. Another word for that alert or being watchful too is being sober, sober-minded and being ready to answer, answer the call. It's kind of like this. I'll just kind of give you an example. How many of you ever prayed for a loved one that they would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior? You ever prayed that prayer? 
and you continue in prayer, you're devoted. Tim always shares with me about his prayer list, you know. And I know I'm on his prayer list, and I know I'm other people's prayer, on people's prayer lists. And I thank you for that because I would not be standing here for 35 years. I know it's a direct result of you going to the throne for me. That's how important prayer is. Let me share with you, though, in conjunction to that question, I gave you that one question this morning, do you see prayer as a necessity every morning to be able to face the day? It's a must. Or is it all these other things? The other thing is here this morning, after we have prayed, after we have said amen, are we alert? Are we watchful? Are we acutely attuned to the Spirit's leading that we can also be maybe a part of the answer to that prayer? Praying for someone's salvation, and here it is. Praying for someone's salvation, but never having shared your faith. That's what it means to be watchful. That means putting feet to the prayer or hands to the situation. Maybe after you've said the amen, maybe it won't be directly in regard to sharing your faith with that person, but maybe just being faithful and sharing your faith so that you know God will bring somebody in the path of someone you might not be physically with to continue to do a work in their lives. Praying the prayer for someone's salvation, but never sharing our faith. Or maybe... Praying for a need to be met in somebody's life, your own life or somebody else's life. But you seeing a need and never being a part of the answer to the prayer of meeting someone else's need. You see, so that's what this means. Not only are we to be devoted to prayer, persevering in prayer, given to prayer, and uh, that being a way of the Christian life, and that being very appropriately understood as a must each and every day, but we're watchful. We're watchful. Uh, we're, 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 we're seeing society. We're seeing how to know how to pray. How do you pray for someone? Well, you need to know something about the person in order to pray for them. Dialoguing with them, communicating with them, talking with them, knowing how to better pray. Karen Herman always asks this of me when I see her on, on Sunday mornings. Ron, how can I specifically pray for you? And sometimes that even takes me off guard. Well, well, um, um, you know, kind of thing. And, um, but that's a question because that's the person who's asking it, sharing with my heart that they care. It's just not a, 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 an academic question. When you ask somebody how you can pray for them, and I encourage you, those who greet people in the church here, you're new to the church, you should be greeted with a friendly face and a handshake, and somebody should be asking you, hey, not only are you welcome here, but we care about you, and how do you know that? I want to pray with you. And guess what? When somebody asks you to pray with them or pray about something, don't make a promise that you're going to pray for them. Pray for them right then. Right then. Because if you're like me, you made a promise, and sometimes we don't keep it. We get busy in our day, and, and uh, I know there's something I'm forgetting. I know there's something I had talked to somebody about. And, oh, yes, it was about praying for her. It was about praying for him. But how much more effective that is to, to take a pause in your busy schedule in that moment and say there's nothing more or a person any more important than you right now in this moment, and I want to agree with you before the throne that God would answer this prayer. And so that's what we need to be about, and that's the level of which we need to address it. Also, verse number two says, with the attitude of thanksgiving. Hey, if you can't be thankful to God, what you can be thankful for, right? He hears and answers our prayer. He knows our hearts even before we ask. He hears the cry of his children. He is, a, he is, he is one that has uh, poured out his grace and his mercies on us each and every day. There's a lot to be thankful for, and we need to dwell on that more and more each day so that it produces in our hearts a thankful spirit. Verses 3 and 4 of, uh, of, of chapter <clears throat> number 4. Praying at the same time for us as well that God will open up to us a door for the word so that we may speak forth the mystery of Christ for which I have also been imprisoned that I may make it clear 
in the way I ought to speak. And so you have another ongoing thought here in, in, in regard to the prayer life of the believer. It's reciprocal, if you would. It's uh, I'm praying for you, you're praying for me, and uh, we're praying in, in regard specifically to things that are going on in people's lives and how they, how they serve the Lord. And so Paul was very open here, openly expressing his dependency on God for what? For fruitfulness in ministry. He knew it wasn't ingenuity. He knew it wasn't gimmicks. He knew it wasn't uh, persuasion. He knew that fruitfulness from faithful service and sowing in the Word of God corporately in teaching and also in personal ways tangibly is how it looks as we carry out meeting those needs and being a part of the answer to prayer. He knew that answers to prayer in fruitfulness of ministry comes down from the Father of lights, the one who is willing to give us those requests and desires of our hearts when they are pertaining to those things that align with his purposes and, and, carrying, out, and carrying out the gospel. Paul also knew something else. He knew and he was well aware that the church was the vehicle or the instrument of grace that God ordained for ministry and through the church life and through prayer, that is where the answers to prayer came. And so here you have a prayer directed on Paul's behalf to the church. Those he sowed into, those he invested in, he say, now I need something from you. And isn't it wonderful when you have seen someone grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, they become a part of the, the partnership. They become part of the team. Paul is asking these churches that he invested in, would you come alongside and pray, and not only pray, but maybe serve and maybe give, that um, we can spread this gospel and that we can do it together and we can be intentionally about the Father's business. And so he knew the purpose of the church, and Paul knew that his stewardship was to carry out and sharing the, the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what is that? And so over in, um, over in uh, Colossians chapter 1, if you would, verse number 25, it says, Of this church, I was made a minister according to what? The stewardship from God bestowed on me for your benefit, so that I might fully carry out the preaching of the Word of God. That is the mystery which has been hidden from past ages and generations, but has now been manifested to the saints of God, to whom God willed to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, who proclaim him, admonishing every man and teaching every man with all wisdom so that we may present every man complete in Christ. What a goal of the church, that we can see people grow up into the knowledge of Christ, mature into Christ, who is the head of the church. You know, if, if that at the end of the day is the result of teaching correct doctrine and teaching uh, correctly the scriptures of the Word of God, it can equate and result in the express reason Paul said, correct living. And when that is accomplished, the church has done what the church has been called to do. Seeing people growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's what Angel was sharing in that announcement this morning. We want to be able to invest in people. We want to come alongside and see people grow in Christ and, and, and then become a, a disciple of Jesus, not just a believer in Jesus Christ, but somebody that, who then can be amazed with what God wants to do with his or her life. Can you look back over your life as a child of God and are you amazed that God is using you today in a way that you would have never dreamed in the past? That's exactly who God uses, the unlikely, the one nobody else would even be looking to, but people who are willing to yield to the move and the leading and the teaching of God's Word and apply those things and then seeing correct living and our lives being a testimony of those, of those things unto the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, again, the Apostle Paul 
has been entrusted with this, this stewardship, if you would, the mystery of Christ, the hope of God in you and, and in him and each and every one of us. And so, church, let me share with you, prayer is not just an option or an activity or something that we participate in. Prayer is a necessity within the church because, there, because of the spiritual blindness of man. And so Paul prays this. Pray, if you would, on our behalf as we go and share the word that a door would be opened unto us, these opportunities, if you would. And not only that, but I would know what to speak in those moments. That I would have that wisdom and that, that direction. And Paul is saying that it is necessary. And so the church must pray for those open doors because, as we said, the cross of Christ is, is that which the enemy opposes and the preaching of God's word. You ever, you ever in your life, in your faith, and in your walk with the Lord deliberately say, well, I want to I wanna serve the Lord, and I want to live for Christ, and I want to take some steps of faith that I've never taken before? You ever prayed that? God helped me to do that, and all of a sudden, you see the enemy is more alive than he's ever been. And that's not by accident, friends. That's not by accident. You prepare a Sunday school lesson, you prepare a message, the enemy will do everything he can to throw the kitchen sink at you to prevent you from being used of God to the fullness or the, the empowerment of God's spirit. He wants to distract you. You ever notice on Sunday mornings that's when most of the crazy things go wrong? You know? Those are oppositions. Those are things that would come against us. And so that's why prayer is so vitally important. Quickly this morning, verse number five. <clears throat> Conduct yourselves or walk with wisdom toward outsiders, those who are, are not in the family of God, those who are not of the faith, those who are not born of the Spirit, making the most of every opportunity. And so this is a responsibility of the church, a responsibility of every child of God who, are, who is a citizen of heaven. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. And we need to know what we're doing here. Are we doing life just like anybody else is doing? No. You have been called out from among them and separated to be equipped to do the work of the ministry and sent back into the world, and that's why you're here after salvation. We're just not about doing a checklist every day about the agendas that we have, we need to answer the question in a broader sense. When I get up in the morning, what is the necessary things in order for me to face the day? And if there is never a spiritual dimension to the answer to that question, we need to go back and examine our hearts. Plain and simple. And I am guilty of it. I am guilty of it. I have my routine, you have your routine, you're creatures of habit. I can close my eyes and point to the pews. That's where Teresa sits. That's where Tim sits. Kareen's over here. Beverly's in the nursery. I know where you are, and I could be a blind man. We don't want to be a spiritual blind man. To the things that oppose the Christian faith, if you dare to take the mantle or the helm and, and to run with those things, because the enemy comes against us. The mystery of Christ, the hope of Christ is he who is in you is the hope. And we need to live that out, and you need to know you're being prayed for, but you need to walk in the responsibility of a child of God, a citizen of heaven, in a world that you're not a part of, but a world that you're in, if that makes sense. Walking in wisdom and revealing, revealing your trust in God which will cause people to ask the question about the hope that's within you. And it goes on to verse number five about redeeming the time. That means making the opportunity count and being sensitive to the open doors, every opportunity. And boy, if you are in tune with God, and I don't mean boy, but I mean, oh boy, if you are in tune with the things of God, you can say amen to this. God does open doors. He does, and you need to say that heartily. 
God opens doors. They're open all around us. But if brushing your teeth and combing your hair and taking the shower and having your clothes ready is a must in the, in the morning and prayer is not really preeminent in that answer, there's a problem because you're going to live as the human physical man just like anyone out, an insider or an outsider, but you need to be about his, his business and to see the opportunities that unfold humanly. God has you in certain circumstances, not by accident, because you're his vehicle. Just like Paul said, I am well aware that the church of the living God is the vehicle through which God works to promote his message and to promote the testimony and to reveal the hope. And so that's why he goes to the church and asks them to be reciprocal in this prayer thing. I'm praying for you. I'm thankful for you. But I need you to pray for me that through every open door and opportunity, not only would that be afforded to us, but I would know what to do with it and to make it count and to make a difference. And so walking. So the other question this morning I'd pose to you, what does an open door look like? Answering some questions this morning, aren't you? What does an open door look like? And maybe we need to answer that question because sometimes the doors are open and we miss them because we don't know that they are the opportunity that God has presented. Maybe God lays somebody on your mind out of nowhere. Somebody's name just pops in your head. Ever have that happen to you? Or is it just my head? Well, that happens to me. And when that happens, I've made it a practice that I pray for that person. Lord, I don't know why that name came to my mind, but maybe they're going through something right now. And if I'm worrying about what's necessary to get started in the morning, such as brushing my teeth or eating my oatmeal or doing those things, I don't see that open door. I don't notice it because there's other things that are more important for me to start my day. Or maybe you have a delay getting to work. Oh my goodness, I'm going to be late for work. You're honking the horn. Hopefully you're not doing other gestures and all that kind of thing out there in that traffic and, and, and things. But just maybe, just maybe there's an open door and you come across somebody because of a circumstance, whatever it might be, that you wouldn't have had unless God was a part of the situation. And maybe his agenda trumps your agenda. And just maybe there's spiritual things all around us going on all the time, and we just need to be acutely attuned. And that's what prayer does for us to make us aware of the move of God's Spirit. In verse number 6, let your speech always be with grace, as though seasoned with salt. That's the part of you making the message of Christ the life of the church, your walk with the Lord, may it be presented as something that is uh, appetizing. It has appeal. We're just not doing something religiously in dead orthodoxy, going through the motions, checking off a box. This is life. This is where I get strengthened. This is where I get encouraged. This is where I know I'm prayed for. This is where I know I can do ministry and, and most importantly be equipped to do it out in the life that I have uniquely that God has designed for me, crossing people's paths that somebody else in the church may never have audience with in their whole lifetime, but God has afforded it to me. And does he open doors? Yes, he does. And we need to be aware of those things. And prayer is the catalyst for that. So always with grace. Always with grace. Season with salt, if you would. And so what we have to say as Christians about the Christian life should be very appetizing to other people. Now, I like pasta. I like spaghetti. Any form, any way. Particular about my sauce. You know, Beverly's got a real good recipe about that. I've even become a coffee snob. It's, it's unreal how things have happened. But, uh, you know, and those things appeal, appeal to me. And I, could, I, could eat, I could eat spaghetti seven days a week. Just really could. Something about carbs, you know, you know. But anyway, but the more I eat it, the more I like it. The more I desire it. 
But you know what? The more I see the things of God, and the more I get out of God's Word, and the more experiences I have in Him, and the more things that He does that completely amaze me, such as Wednesday night with those boys, my appetite just increases for those very things. And God feeds us spiritually. God nurtures us. He causes us to be healthy in our walk, praying. Yeah? Does your heart good to see 15, 20 guys out on a Tuesday night just being transparent and, and, and getting around God's word and, and hungering for truth and challenging each other and growing in their faith? God is up to things, guys. And you know, we need to be aware of the open doors. We're not just sitting there absorbing on Tuesday nights. We're sitting there because we can make a difference in, in, in life. We can make a difference in life and knowing that other people are doing that with us and that's called the church. And we need to be about the Father's business and we need to be praying for each other. We need to be consumed in this Christian code of conduct and getting grounded in the Word. That's what those classes do for you and so that it can translate into correct living. Maybe you need a victory in your life. Maybe there's something that is a besetting sin in your life. You need to get grounded in the Word and strengthened in truth so that you can know the abundant life and that you can know that He is more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror through Him, through him that loves you and gave His life for you. These things are tangible. These things can be applied. There's victory in Christ and He has set the sinner free. And that is what the Christian life can do for each and every one of us. And so we need to make it a, a, an appealing presentation. And um, who better, to, who better to, to propagate the gospel than those who have been changed and transformed by it? It's real to us. We believe that it's brought us from darkness into light. And we believe that we're, we're never the same because of it. Not that we're perfect, not that we're holy, but we serve the God who sits on the throne and rules and reigns in the affairs of men. And no matter what comes our way, at the end of the day, it's going to be all right. Spending more time in prayer than more time doing, doing these other things. Sometimes, you know, we've been in the faith so long, we forget about enjoying the Christian life. We need to spend time in God's Word to refresh us and to, re, to remind us why we celebrate that God in Christ and His Word, the Lord Jesus, is, is the greatest person that we know in our lives because of His Word, because of what He's done, what, he, what changes He has brought uh, to us, reminding ourselves, enjoying the Christian life, and sharing with the lost world that God is mighty to save. So the Christian code of conduct, your prayer life, the prayer life of the church, your walk, your conduct before those who are outside of the church, your speech, seasoned with salt, always with grace. Allow it to be like, you know, just something that, that, that draws people. Why? Because they see something in you that they do not have. And that is the mystery. Something's going on about you. I just don't know what it is, but your life is something that just appeals. And we need to answer these questions this morning that were presented. What is the most important things you feel you need to do before you face a given day? And if prayer isn't a part of that, we, do, we need to do a whole lot more praying than we do walking. For we need to not go out but by prayer and fasting and dependency on the one who not only saved us but enables us to live the Christian life. Lord God, we thank you for this time together in your word. We thank you for this worship hour, Lord, and we pray that, uh, Lord, as we offer it up to you, may you be glorified and may it not just be sound teaching, but, Father, may it translate into correct living and victory in our lives that we might make a difference in a world father that needs you and father that we might see many one to your your uh, saving knowledge and uh, god that uh, people would come to the knowledge of the truth because they see christ in us 
asking of that hope. May we be witnesses. May we be disciples. May we be cross bearers. May we be burden bearers. May we know better how to pray for one another by being connected and, and being involved and being caring. Uh, Lord, may Christ be seen in us. And Father, we, we pray, God, that you would use us for your glory and for your honor. Dismiss us today with your blessing. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before you leave, Brian Zemendorf will be out in the front foyer. If you'd like to help with the grounds or the landscaping this season, please talk to him. The sign-up sheet for the uh, discipleship course, if you would. There was one other thing, but I forgot, and we'll pick it up again next week. God bless you. Have a great afternoon.